smiling courtesy of love, the holy suit which fain it would convince. Yet, since love's argument was first on foot, let not the cloud of sorrow just lift from what it purposed, since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome profitable as to rejoice at friends but newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Honest, plain words best pierce the ear of grief. For your fair sakes have we neglected time, played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty, ladies, hath much deformed us, fashioning our humours even to the opposed end of our intents. And what in us hath seemed ridiculous, as love is, full of unbefitting strains, all wanton as a child, skipping and vain, formed by the eye, and therefore, like the eye, full of strange shapes, of habits and of forms, varying in subject as the eye doth roll to every varied object in its glance. Which party-coated presence of loose love put on by us, if in your heavenly eye have misbecomed our oaths and gravities, those heavenly eyes that looked into these faults suggested us to make. Therefore, ladies, our love being yours, the error that love makes is likewise yours. We to ourselves prove false by being once false, forever to be true to those that make us both. Fair ladies, you. We have received your letters full of love, your favors the ambassadors of love, and in our maiden council rated them for courtship, pleasant jest, and courtesy, as bombast and as lining to the time. But more devout than this in our respects have we not been, and therefore met your loves in their own fashion, like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jest. So did our looks. We did not quote them so. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. A time, methinks, too short to make a world without end bargaining. No, no, my lord. Your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness. And therefore this. If for my love, as there is no such cause, you will do aught, this shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust, but go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There stay until the twelve celestial signs have brought about the annual reckoning. If this austere, insociable life change not your offer made in heat of blood, if frosts and fasts, hard lodging and thin weeds nip not the gaudy blossoms of your love, but that it bear this trial and last love, then, at the expiration of the year, come, challenge me. Challenge me by these deserts, and by this virgin palm now kissing thine, I will be thine. Until that instant, Shut my woeful self up in a mournful house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this or more than this I would deny to flatter up these powers of mine with rest, the sudden hand of death close up mine eye. Hence, hermit, then. My heart is in thy breast. But what to me, my love? But what to me? A wife? A beard, fair health and honesty. With threefold love, I wish you all these three. <sighs> Shall I say I thank you, gentle wife? Not so, my lord. A twelve month and a day, I'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say. Come when the king doth to my lady come, then, if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll serve thee true and faithfully till then. Yet swear not, lest ye be forsworn again. What says Mariah? At the twelve-month end, I'll change my black gown for a faithful friend. Studies, my lady. 
mistress, look on me. Behold the window of my heart, mine eye. What humble suit attends thy answer there? Impose some service on me for thy love. Oft have I heard of you, my lord Barone, before I saw you. And the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks, full of comparisons and wounding flouts which you on all estates will execute that come within the mercy of your wit. To weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain, and therewithal to win me, if you please, without the which I am not to be won, you shall this twelve-month term, from day to day, visit the speechless sick, and still converse with groaning wretches, and your task shall be, with all the fierce endeavour of your wit, to enforce the painted impotent to smile. To move wild laughter in the throat of death it cannot.